later, letter, same. Rachel had written the first sentence of her letter three times already, and just when she was beginning to think she'd never find the right words, she gave up trying so hard. Sure, it was a little strange writing to this man she'd known so well as a child but hadn't talked to in over a decade. And now, sitting there with her pen down and leaning back in her chair, she wondered just how well she'd known him when they were kids back in the old neighborhood. She knew he'd remember her name and the time they spent together, but she wondered if it still meant the same to him as it did to her. She wondered if the same lingering emotions were there, if the same special feeling existed when he thought about her, if he even did. Then she remembered why she was writing the letter in the first place, and Rachel quickly took up her pen, took a new sheet of paper, and began composing with ease. Her letter read, Dear Sammy, Sometimes I think about how our grandmothers are still in the old neighborhood where we grew up, and how they are best friends. I like that a lot. Do you ever think about that? Hope all is well. Best, Rachel. Then she got up from her desk and went outside to sit on the front step. Her children would be home from school in an hour, and then her husband would be home too. She had one hour of personal time to stare off toward the horizon in the late afternoon. She looked east, knowing only a mere thousand miles or so separated her from her true home, and through her sad eyes that day, it never seemed so close. His mother as well. Miles Miller knew he wasn't easy to get along with, but all of his relationships over the last year or so had plundered and failed, and even he was surprised by it. He'd somehow managed to neglect his family and loved ones. His friends hadn't heard from him in months outside of a quick letter or voicemail to say he was still alive. Miles was living in an apartment about an hour from where he'd grown up, the place where most of his family remained. One morning in October, Miles pulled into his old neighborhood and parked down the street from where his grandmother lived. It was damp, cold, and foggy that morning, which suited Miles' mood just fine. He stopped his car about a block from his grandmother's house where he noticed his sister's Jeep parked in the driveway. He sat in his car with it still running while he dialed his sister's phone number on his cell. As he held it to his ear, listening to the phone ring, he looked around. He was right in front of the house where his best friend from childhood had lived. He looked across the street and down a few houses to the spot where he'd met his first love. Then his sister answered and Miles convinced her to slip out of the house and come down the street to his car. A few minutes later, she was approaching him, wrapping her arms around her body to fight off the morning chill. He reached over and opened the passenger side door. She got in and immediately noticed the back seat was filled with his belongings. You're leaving? She asked, closing the door behind her. Hello, Rachel, he said quietly. His sister sat there calm as ever. She and Miles had always had this mutual silence between them, and it allowed them to communicate easier without words as only siblings can do. Where are you going? She asked him while blowing warm breath into her cupped hands. Leaning forward to turn up the heat, Miles said, West, I don't know, I think maybe Denver. Jerry always talks about living there. They sat quietly for a few minutes more. Then she said, Mom's in there, if you'd like to see her again. Miles was silent. Then his sister said, I'm moving in with Charlie. After a few more minutes of silence, she leaned forward and turned down the heat. She opened the door to leave, and without turning back to face him, she told her brother one more time, I love you, Miles. One of Three Places She watched him get in his car and leave the hotel parking lot. She got in her own car, inherited to her by her brother Jerry, and 
and drove for a few blocks before pulling over again. There on the side of the road in a neighborhood she wasn't familiar with, she rubbed her eyes and sighed. In her mind, she'd forgotten where it was she was supposed to be coming from, so she recounted the list in her head again. 1. At home. 2. At work. 3. At the gym. Finally, she remembered she had told her husband that the gym is where she would be all afternoon. She put the car in gear and drove on. After a few miles, she stopped the car again, this time in front of a row of pawn shops. She got out her cell phone and dialed her husband Richard's phone number. Hello, Richard, it's me, she said, wiping tears from the corner of her eyes. I've been thinking about it, and I guess you're right. She paused, listening to her husband on the other end before interrupting him. No, Richard, stop it. This is where we always end up, and I think we're both sick of it. Once she'd realized her husband had hung up on her, she put the car back into gear and drove on. Not wanting to go home, she decided to drive over to the gym after all. If she hurried, she could make the 5 o'clock yoga group. If she hurried, she could occupy herself for the next couple of hours. If she hurried, she could put off going home a little longer. If she hurried, she could outrun her miserable failure of a life, and if she hurried, she could run headlong into a new dilemma just waiting for her to arrive. If she stopped, she'd see that the world around her really was a swirling tornado of disaster, inviting her to reach out and cherry-pick a crisis for herself. She skipped yoga and headed straight for the treadmills instead. If she hurried, well, if she hurried, that's all she'd need to do.